India's top two rating agencies, Crystal and Ikra, have reported their upgrade downgrade summary for the year that ended last week on Friday. And both point out that the number of upgrades are a bit lower than in the previous year and the number of downgrades are a bit higher. Now, the credit health of corporate India is still better than the last 10 year average, uh, uh, the rating agencies point out. But there is some moderation from the excellent uh, levels that one saw in FY22. Joining me to analyze the FY23 upgrade downgrade tally are Soma Shekhar Vemuri, Senior Director and Head Ratings Criteria. Uh, regulatory Affairs Operations, oh God, quite a bit, at Crystal Ratings and Jitin Mankar, Head Credit Policy and Senior Vice President at ICRA. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Uh, uh, Mr. Vemuri, if, if I may start with you. I think it's very clear that uh, FY23 uh, first half, you are comparing first half and second half. First half, you had five upgrades to one downgrade. It's kind of moderated a bit as you come to second half. Uh, can you just give us the details of the numbers first? Yeah, thanks, Lata. Uh, so, uh, when we look at the credit ratio, which is nothing but the ratio of upgrades to downgrades, uh, that you know has moderated to about two point one nine times uh, in in the second half compared to a level of five point five two that we saw in the first half. This was very much in line with our uh, anticipation because. Uh, uh, you know, when when uh, in October uh, we did our previous edition of ratings roundup, we had uh, highlighted that we expect uh, this ratio to moderate, given that globally we are seeing higher interest rates and a slowing uh, uh, kind of a demand, and and th so so the moderation is very much in line with uh, our anticipation. In fact, uh, export oriented sectors uh, you know have uh, seen a far sharper moderation in both the upgrade rate uh, and and uh, pick up in the uh, downgrade rate which is there. Overall, when we look at uh, the overall uh, segments, uh, we have seen that uh, upgrade rate has moderated from uh, from the high of almost 16% plus uh, in first half last uh, uh, fiscal to about 13.5%. Uh, it's still much higher than the 10-year average uh, uh, that we have seen. Uh, uh, and the reasons are the steadfast uh, domestic demand, uh, which is there. The the push from the government, especially on the infra side, as well as the very strong balance sheets uh, for the corporate uh, India. Uh, however, on the on the downside, what we have seen is the downgrade rate has picked up and at about 6.2%, uh, it stands at, uh, in, it's very close to its 10-year average, uh, it's, it's nearing its 10-year average, okay. and, and uh, the, the slowing global uh, uh, growth that we have seen, uh, as well as uh, some of the profitable... Okay. I think we got the gist. Uh, let's get back. Uh, on account of, uh, okay. on got, yeah, got it. Uh, we'll just set that line straight. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Jitin Makar, uh, your uh, numbers are, you had upgrades of 561 in 22. Now it has dropped to 441. Number of downgrades were 184. They've also come down a bit to 156. But uh, number of upgrades to downgrades were 3 is to 1. Now they are more like 2.8 is to 1. Uh, your thoughts, what did well, what didn't? I think we uh, look at the performance, the rating performance in uh, FI23. A few sectors which stood out in terms of high rating activity would be real estate, financials, textiles and uh, hospitality. Uh, now, the real estate sector, we've seen that uh, there were a large number of uh, upgrades in this sector, continuing with the trend that we've seen in FY22 as well. Uh, and we've seen uh, uh, almost 600 million uh, square feet of uh, sales that this FY23 is going to clock. Uh, new launches were calibrated by players. Leverage levels have come down. Uh, Year-to-date inventory levels are, I think, a dec at a decadal low. So these factors supported the trade profiles of a large number of real estate for real estate entities and that supported the upgrade momentum. Uh, likewise, in the financial sector, we are, we are in, a, in a phase where uh, the asset quality of financial sector entities, uh, including banks, has been at its decadal best. Uh, credit growth has returned uh, and uh, uh, equity mobilization has also been happening. In fact, a large number of upgrades in FY23 were also contributed by fresh equity mobilization by several financial sector entities, uh, particularly the mid-sized NBFCs. So uh, talk, uh, talk about uh, the real estate sector, financial sector, uh, hospitality sector again was a standout sector. Uh, again, from the second half of FI uh, 
uh, FY23, we have seen that uh, a large number of upgrades have happened in the hospitality sector, and that's uh, they sh uh, shrugged off the uh, deep pain and strife that the sector had been going through uh, in FY21 and the better part of FY22 as well. So these are the sectors where we've seen a lot of rating activity. Okay. Yeah, got that. Actually, I want to come back to you on construction and pharma, where in spite of everything going good, uh, those two sectors have not shown that kind of improvement in the upgrade-downgrade ratio. Uh, Mr. Vemuri, I wanted to come back to you on the worries you show, you, you see about the coming year or the year that, just, that has just started. Uh, your report points out the fact that inflation persists, even if it is moderated slightly, and that uh, the global headwinds are severe. So do you think uh, corporate balance sheets and hence the upgrade, downgrade, I mean, the number of downgrades can rise? So uh, clearly, uh, you know, uh, from our overall outlook perspective, we still uh, anticipate upgrades uh, to outnumber downgrades, uh, you know, uh, going into fiscal uh, 24. Uh, having said that, we, we believe there may be a little bit of moderation uh, compared to what we have seen uh, last uh, fiscal. Uh, clearly, uh, the domestic uh, demand holding up and the government's uh, continued uh, infra push uh, are, are, are uh, positives. And, and balance sheets also have a reasonable amount of cushion uh, because they are at a decadal uh, low. At a median gearing of about 0.45 times in terms of debt to equity, uh, balance sheets are at the healthiest that we've seen in the last uh, you know more than 10 years. And hence, even, even if there is a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, 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 pain which is there on the profitability side, there will be cushion to 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 tolerate uh, that. Having said okay. that, uh, you know, typically what we see is, uh, you know, when 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 the monetary authorities take uh, policy actions, uh, the impact full impact of that is felt with a lag of three to four quarters. So uh, the rate hikes that we have seen uh, uh, last year by RBI, uh, the the effect of that is uh, likely to be fully seen uh, in this fiscal, and hence, uh, you know, you could see some impact on on the demand and on the okay. global side, like you highlighted uh, clearly. Uh, there are uh, headwinds, uh, which are there, especially from uh, US and the Eurozone. And last but not the least, even, uh, you know, from, from uh, the, the, the monetary tightening, uh, tight, uh, tight environment uh, globally, for those corporates where uh, there are um, uh, upcoming uh, sizable debt maturities in, in uh, of overseas debt, uh, the refinancing risk is also something that we will want to watch. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Jitin, if you can point out to, I mean, your uh, press release also points to similar headwinds. Uh, monetary tightening in India, uh, uh, growth question marks abroad. Where will you worry about? Which areas? Uh, yes, uh, you're right that there are few uh, headwinds that uh, Indian, India is going to be seeing at 524, but we are not that much worried uh, uh, that uh, it's, it's creating a lot of ruffles in our uh, outlook on the broader economy as such. Uh, even if we see that there is going to be an, an, an export slowdown, we are expecting around six percent decline in exports from India, merchandise exports from India in FY24. Uh, but if you look at history in the past, whenever there has been episodes of global economic slowdown, uh, things have bounced up very quickly. Uh, whether you talk about the textile sector or the gems and jewelry sector, uh, FY24 they might they might see a slowdown, but uh, it might not be to the extent that it becomes unmanageable. Uh, and that's why we do not do not expect uh, downgrades to, do, to go too high, too far ahead of themselves in FY24 compared to FY23. Likewise, mm -hmm. test rate risk is certainly a risk. FY24, we'll see the full uh, impact of hiking uh, the interest rates, the MCLR rates uh, to be transmitted to the PLs of uh, the entities in FY24. Uh, but there again, uh, uh, the severity is not going to, to the extent that it becomes unmanageable. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, Yes, one Okay. Uh, sorry, I, I'm hurrying because I'm trying to get maximum from you all in the uh, little time I have. Uh, Mr. Vemuri, what would be the specific sectors you will worry about, if at all? Um, I think, uh, you know, the, the sectors where uh, debt is very heavy and, and uh, you know, the interest uh, rates are, are fairly high, those uh, would, be the, would, would be the sectors typically uh, some of the infra sectors uh, would, would, would uh, come in that uh, bracket. And the export-oriented ones, uh, clearly, because, uh, you know, the, there is a, a challenge in terms of the demand uh, globally. So those are the ones where uh, we would typically 
uh, pay a lot more portion. Also, uh, if you look at uh, MSMEs, even last year itself, uh, we saw that uh, you know uh, uh, quite a lot of downgrades were uh, coming from the MSME segment. Uh, uh, that is also something that we would want to watch out for. Okay, you do you expect MSMEs? You know the uh, munificence they got, the uh, uh, sops they got from uh, COVID or because of COVID will now have run out. So could you see, therefore, more downgrades, uh, uh, Mr. Emuri, you first, MSMEs, mid-caps? Yeah, clearly, uh, you know, with, with uh, the COVID uh, policy uh, kind of uh, uh, relaxations that were there for the MSME sector, you know, now coming to uh, almost an end, uh, and and the, the debt which was there under moratorium, you know, those repayments kind of uh, coming on, uh, then ability to tackle uh, the higher uh, inflationary trends and their ability to kind of pass on uh, uh, higher uh, raw material costs is something which is, uh, you know, which has been tested and likely to continue to get tested. And that is where, uh, you know, uh, there would be a little bit of pressure uh, on, on, on uh, the MSME sector. Okay. I, I just want a one word answer from you all, if you all can. Uh, Mr. Makkar, are you uh, pretty sure that uh, the upgrade-downgrade ratio will worsen a little bit in 24? Yeah, it should, I think, because uh, downgrades should inch up from here. And a lot of rebound that was uh, due okay. the past uh, two years, that oh. would have happened in 2020. And Mr. Memuri? I would say moderate uh, from okay. these levels, uh, not worsen. Okay. Not worsen. All right. That's very important, the two words. Thank you very much, uh, Jitin and Mr. Vibhuri, for giving us a wrap of the year that was and some red flags that we can't have excellent upgrade-downgrade ratios going forward. Upgrades will lessen a bit. Downgrades will increase a little. We wrap up on Bazaar. Jotbusters up.